Hi guys, it's Dad Robin again from the Super Tolentino family and uh, just to let you know I've been asked by one of my colleague RNs uh, she asked me one day what does it take to become a rehab nurse so just to let you know I've been an RN for almost 10 years now and most of my career as an RN I've worked as a rehab nurse just to let you know there are two kinds of rehab units okay rehab stands for rehabilitation so uh, the first kind of a rehab unit is the outpatient rehab, which means it's uh, like a clinic wherein the patient comes in and leaves on the same day. So they just see the, uh, let's say the PT or the OT on a scheduled basis um, on an appointment and they leave. So that's the first kind of rehab unit, the outpatient rehab. The other uh, rehab unit would be like where I used to work in is uh, the actual rehabilitation unit of the hospital. So uh, this is a unit uh, designated for patients who would need intensive rehab for a few number of uh, weeks or months. So the patients are actually admitted. They have their own rooms in the unit. So they would be seen by the OTs and the PTs or the uh, speech and language pathologist or the recreation therapies and of course the doctors, right? So there's a lot of interactions uh, when it comes to being an inpatient rehab um, uh, client, right? So uh, going back to that question, what does it take to become a rehab nurse? So first of all, you must have a really good background knowledge about medical and surgical nursing. The reason why I mentioned medical nursing is because um, most of your clients that come in uh, would be coming from the stroke unit. So these are the patients who had suffered a stroke and therefore would need um, more rehab coming from the PT or the OT, so they would need to be admitted in the hospital still, right? And then the reason why I mentioned you have to have a really good background in surgical nursing is because some of the patients would come from the surgical floors like the orthopedics because um, let's say they had just had a knee replacement or hip replacement or they broke their arm uh, they would need more rehab and so they would uh, be uh, instead of being discharged home they would be sent to the rehab unit in the hospital and they would stay there for maybe about six to eight weeks or maybe up to four months until the fracture heals. So that's why I'm saying uh, if you want to become a rehab nurse, you must have a, a very good background when it comes to medical and surgical nursing. Of course, number two is you would have to need a good set of communication skills. The reason why I say this is because, as I've said, I keep on saying, uh, the patients interact with a lot of uh, other disciplines like the OT, the PT, the speech language pathologist, and the rec therapist, and of course the doctors, right? So um, you must have a really good set of communication skills because you're going to be that person who will relay um, pertinent and significant information about the patient to the other therapists, right? Because the therapist would need to know how the patient is actually healing or actually transferring or mobilizing. So they would, uh, you know, they would make suggestions and uh, referrals, necessary referrals to other, other healthcare team members too, right? So you must have a good uh, communication skills and PR with the other healthcare team members. Number three, I would say really good delegation skills. The reason why I'm saying this is when I used to work at the rehab unit, I would have two other team members, an LPN or licensed practical nurse and an HCA. So being the team lead, I would need to prioritize which patients I should see first when, you know, when two patients or multiple patients need to see you or the, you know, the nursing staff. So uh, if you would, if you don't have like good delegation skills, you'll try to see everyone, uh, you know, but you can physically and possibly do that. So you must know which one or which patient um, can be uh, seen by, an, by a healthcare aide or helped by a healthcare aide or which patient should be uh, assessed or helped 
by an LPN. And of course, the one with the most priority should be seen by yourself, the RN. So a good um, set of delegation skills will help when you're in the rehab nursing facility or unit because it's a team nursing. So it's a team effort. So you must know which ones to see first. You have to be able to prioritize which patient needs your attention um, promptly. All right. And then another set or another skill that you would need is to, of course, you must have uh, critical thinking. Of course, knowledge is not enough. Knowledge about medical or surgical nursing won't be enough unless you use it. So using it would involve critical thinking. So that's also a very important um, uh, aspect when you are going to work in a rehab uh, unit. And then the other one would be uh, you should have like good relations be able to, to establish good relationship with your patients the reason why i'm saying this is because patients there are are there because they are trying to get better they're trying to get back to their baseline when i say baseline when you hear the word baseline when it comes to rehab nursing it means that uh it is or it was their status like transfer and mobility status prior to being admitted in the hospital so let's say uh, let's say for myself i'm speaking for myself let's say before i i fractured my my, my leg i was independent at home i don't need any uh, crutches or canes or any equipments at all so my baseline would be independent with transfers and mobilities and of course post-op you may need let's say one person or two person I say so even the mechanical lifts to get you moving right so that would be like the current like baseline for me like a two person assist with the crutches or two person assist with the walker so what I'm trying to say here is that you must have good relationship with your patients because they they would also rely on you to get motivated to get themselves moving so that's why we um, we as nurses are equipped with a lot of uh, set of skills uh, and one of them is building rapport with our patients, right? So even though the patients, let's say, are tired or aching uh, and after we give them the necessary medications, um, we are, in a way, should be experienced enough to get them motivated and moving because the OT and the PT, uh, the, the OT and the PT would only see them for like an hour, two hours a day, and still the nursing staff or the RN who always oversees them, right? So, uh, being the RN, there's a lot on your shoulders when it comes to them being motivated and being, um, how do you say this? Uh, yeah, being motivated to go back home right or get back to their regional baseline as much as possible so yeah we have nursing i've been working i mean i've worked there for almost six years and um, i enjoyed it the page the the, the the positive thing in working in the rehab unit is that the patients are are most of them are highly motivated because there's a criteria just so you know patients coming from the med medical or surgical units and applying uh, for a bed in the rehab unit, they must pass certain criteria. Uh, some of them would be like they, sh they should be highly motivated, they don't have behavior issues, They're, they have good weight-bearing status, and, uh, and their goal is ultimately to get back home and get back to their baseline. So you have to keep that in mind if you are applying for a job as a rehab nurse, you should know all these aspects because uh, the the manager or the HR who will be interviewing you would ask you for some what 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 uh, set of skills would you bring in in the unit if you get hired or what set of skills would make you get hired in the first place, right? So I yeah, just mentioned that you have a good set of communication skills. You have. Um, uh, good delegation skills you have a well-rounded knowledge about medical and surgical nursing and you have a set of skills that can keep the or that can make the patients highly motivated 
to participate in all the rehab uh, activities um, that they have, right? So, yeah, I think these are the four basic sets of skills that you would need to become a rehab nurse. Sorry if, it, uh, if I answered uh, for a long, um, I gave you a very long answer there. But yeah, I hope this helps if you are interested in getting into rehab nursing, guys. And if you have any questions, you can post a comment down below and I'll try to answer them as uh, soon as I see them. Okay, guys? And stay safe there and stay highly motivated. Bye-bye. Thank you.